Welcome back to the Blue Chair Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, I'll be covering my thoughts on Tennessee's seventh day of spring practice. And for those of y'all that don't know, there is some breaking news that Coach Kelly Harper, who is our Lady Vols basketball head coach, has been relieved of her duties. And, I, you know, I have to tip my hat to Danny White for doing this at the time that he did it, right? He waits until our men's team is done so that there are no unnecessary distractions. And, you know, he goes on ahead and pulls that trigger. But I think that he figured or, you know, he probably already felt like she was going to be getting let go after the loss to NC State. And, you know, I told y'all towards the end of that game, you know, there was a timeout late and she's crying to the referees instead of coaching her team up. That was my final straw. And, you know, I'm sure that that wasn't great optics for Danny White either. But I will say this, any good AD, OK, is going to have a consistent list of, you know, maybe five to ten potential head coaches in case something like this happens. So I know that Danny White is going to be no different. He's a great AD and he's got that list. He's probably already shortened it down to maybe like his top five. He's probably going to be getting into the interviews here shortly. And I would expect for Tennessee to have a new head coach for our Lady Vols team pretty soon. But on to the football notes uh, from today, right? Seventh day of spring practice, you know, coming off of a scrimmage and the players had a lot of time off. The scrimmage was last Wednesday. It's now Monday. I don't know how many days that is, but they had several days off. So they should come back well rested. And some of the players probably were able to go back home and spend some time with their families for Easter. So that's always a really good deal, especially, you know, getting back into the real swing of football practice. It's extremely strenuous and it's just good to be able to unwind and take your you know mind and your body away from football for a few days. So I think that the team looked really good. OK, just kind of going through all the clips that we went through earlier today and we'll touch on some of that briefly. But we also got to hear from Coach Martinez, who is the secondary coach. He's really more of the cornerbacks coach. I think he also helps out with the star position. We got to hear from him after the practice. We also got to hear from several players, uh, including Jalen McMurray, who is our transfer from Temple, probably going to be playing corner or star. And um, Jamar McCoy, who is our transfer cornerback, from Oregon State, I've got him pegged as a starter. And we heard from Andre Turrentine, who is potentially going to be one of the starting safeties. And Jordan Thomas, probably going to be the starting star player for us. And Ricky Gibson. So number one thing that I took away from what everyone had to say is that there is a lot of very healthy competition in that room. And I'll also just go a little bit further in listening to them speak. You know, just talking about those players. They all sound like they are the guy. Just the way that they were talking. There's a whole lot of confidence. And it's high expectations for each of those players. Now, they won't all be starters, but I do think that everyone that we got to hear from today will get to play a lot coming up this season. And they're going to get thrown to the mix, okay? So I felt good about that. And also, just in listening to a couple of things that Coach Martinez had to say about the players, uh, just talking about uh, Jalen McMurray, he says, man, this is a guy that, you know, he's got the proper skill set, but on top of that, he, he sees the plays. Like, he understands the plays. He knows what play is coming before it comes. And that's, I mean, you can't really quantify that. Uh, that's huge, especially playing on defense. If you can get a good beat on what the offense is doing, it's going to make you that much better. And he's a guy that just in watching his film at Temple, I love what I saw. And some people will say, well, you know, these guys coming from some of these smaller schools, can they play in the SEC? And it was good just to hear uh, Jalen talk about, hey, man, I think that the skilled players are pretty much on par at almost every level, okay, you know, especially if you're talking about D1 football, it's pretty much going to be the same caliber of athletes where things, you know, where there's a difference at, where there starts to be a separation is with those big guys, right? There's a whole lot of average size, really good athletes walking around on the face of this planet, but there's not a lot of overly large human beings that are also good athletes. And that's what you're going to see in the SEC. Now for, you know, the secondary pieces and for these skill guys, you don't have to too much worry about those front seven players because you're not going to be encountering them too much now every now and then especially playing corner you may have a big guy come out and try to block you but that's not going to necessarily be the norm and there's a lot of ways to be able to counteract that i just think that jalen mcmurray is a guy from what i saw on film he's very physical okay he's got great fundamentals great technique and i think that he's going to be fine with any of that so i'm looking for him to be a guy that can maybe potentially push to be a starter now i do think that Ricky Gibson and Jermont McCoy will be the starters at cornerback, but who knows what's going to happen between now and the start of the season. I will say this about Ricky Gibson. He looks maybe to be the thinnest cornerback that we have right now, just at least from what I can see on these clips. I still think that he's probably, you know, 1A, 1B with Jermont McCoy as far as his skill set and being able to cover. 
but he is probably going to need to gain five to 10 pounds before the season starts. That would just be my recommendation to him. It's going to help him to stay healthy, uh, you know, in tackling some of these bigger running backs and things like that on an all the time basis. But I love his skill set. You know, I love the way he looked out there on the field today. He does a beautiful job of staying on top of routes. And that's going to be the most important thing for all of these secondary players is to don't get beat deep. Okay. Like that's numero uno. Do not get beat deep. And a lot of us as fans, we get frustrated seeing players giving up some of these shorter routes. And we don't know, are they playing man? Are they in some sort of a zone? But I think that as long as you don't get beat, you know, you can kind of start there, right? And then once you get more comfortable with that, you can work your way up to stopping some of these shorter passes. And I think that Ricky Gibson is going to be very well versed in that. Expect for our secondary as a whole to be pretty much shut down. Um, but, you know, he talked a whole lot about confidence and pretty much just saying that, the, hey, the game has slowed down for him. We also heard Coach Martinez speak on Boo Carter, who, you know, he's saying, hey, I can see that the game is already slowing down for him. We're just seven days into spring practice. Now, Boo was up on campus for our bowl game prep, but he wasn't really, you know, learning anything. He's just kind of going out there as a scout team player and, and things like that. And he's not really getting to, you know, have the game taught to him the way that it's been taught to him since spring practice has started. So that was good to hear. Um, and, you know, just in listening to, Guys like Jermaine McCoy, he's talking about some of the reasons that he decided to transfer to Tennessee and pretty much everyone that transferred in, they're talking about playing in the SEC. It does mean more. It's a really big deal. This is the best league outside of the AFC and NFC, so everyone wants to come and play here. But what I think was the most interesting thing, and I didn't know this, is that he played wide receiver in high school and he was actually recruited as a wide receiver, decides to make the transition over to defensive back. And it, I mean, it paid dividends for him. I think that every single position group should you know, get kind of cross-trained on the other side of the ball as well, or at least just kind of be able to sit in the meeting rooms, just some, or, you know, maybe be able to talk to some of their teammates about what the other side of the ball is thinking, because that perspective, it adds a whole lot to your game. And that's something that I can tell you from playing wide receiver and cornerback in high school. Once I got to college, I had the option of playing either one. And I decided to play defense too, just because I felt like my upside was higher there, but it, it really helps you out so much because doing both, you know, okay, on offense, this is okay, like their split is more to the inside. So it's probably going to be an outside breaking route. Um, you know, it's it's a whole lot of little different, uh, you know, intricacies that I won't go into here. But just trust me when I tell you that's going to be huge. You can see it in Jermon McCoy's play. He just, he looks really good doing it. But it's even more impressive watching him coming from Oregon State, the way that he was, I mean, just very, very dominant. He was one of the best, I would say, cornerbacks in the entire country last year as a true freshman. So that's huge. And he's just going to continue to get better. That's something else that Coach Martinez talked about. So definitely looking forward to those two players or, you know, those three players having a, you know, really big showing this season. Now on to Jordan Thomas. I couldn't hear everything that he was saying, but he does just talk about being a leader and helping these young guys figure it out, helping these transfer players figure it out. So I think that that's really, really big. Uh, and then Andre Turrenton, I mean, boy, does he sound like a veteran or what? I mean, he sounds like he is that guy. And I think that he's got a really good shot to be that guy at safety. Now it's going to be down between him and John Slaughter. I kind of favor John Slaughter a little bit more, even though with Turrenton, we saw him be more physical, okay, uh, in the Citrus Bowl. But with John Slaughter, it seems like that's more of who he actually is. Does he know the playbook? Does he understand what he's seeing out there on the field as well as uh, Andre Turrenton does? I don't know that. Okay, that's something that the coaches will most definitely know. But you do, especially playing safety, you got to know what the heck is going on out there, uh, you know, on an, an extremely high level. They are kind of like the middle linebackers, right, who a lot of people look at as the quarterbacks of the defense, but the safeties a lot of times are too in their own right, but more so just with the secondary pieces. So, he could be very, very valuable for us. But, you know, I love the way that all of our players sounded out there speaking. And, you know, I think that this secondary literally is going to be one of the best in the entire country. Something else that, uh, you know, I heard from, I think it was Ricky Gibson. He's talking about, hey, man, you know, our defensive line is really good. We're going to have a great pass for us. So he's just talking about getting more, uh, you know, technical, right? And we also heard from some of the insiders that Coach Martinez was just really honing in on Ricky Gibson about those small, finite details. And that is a sign that Coach Martinez is expecting a lot from Ricky Gibson. But, yeah, I mean, look at the way that our, uh, you know, D-line is set up just as far as being able to get a great pass rush. And then you look on that back end, how tight the coverage is going to be. It's going to work hand-in-hand. Hand. We're going to see a lot of stats. We're going to see a lot of picks or passes broken up. 
And, you know, I think that everyone in our secondary is going to have good ball skills. That's something that Coach Martinez has always coveted. As long as I've heard him speak, right, like way before he was at Tennessee, he always goes out and tries to get players with really good ball skills. So I think that we will have a bunch of turnovers. And just as a whole, you know, our defense should take a gigantic leap forward. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm very impressed with what I've seen thus far. I want to hear more about what's going on out there in the scrimmages and things like that, because it does sound like our guys are winning most of those battles. But at the same time, sounds like there's some offensive players uh, at the wide receiver position that are also winning battles. And, you know, I also want to talk about a guy that sounds like Coach Martinez was coaching hard today, okay, trying to get his energy levels up, and that's Jordan Matthews. Will he be able to work himself into, you know, a rotational piece at cornerback? Right now, I think that we're looking at Ricky Gibson, Jermont McCoy as the starters, but can it end up being, uh, you know, Jordan Matthews and Jalen Jalen McMurray being those, you know, two or, or I guess those three and fourth guys that will be able to come onto the field? We need that depth. There's a whole lot of length. There's a whole lot of size and speed in that secondary. So we'll see how he can kind of come along. I have seen a couple of clips of him kind of getting beat deep, um, but you never really know what's going on, uh, you know, in a day-to-day rep-to-rep situation with him. I also talk about Christian Connors, and, you know, I spoke about him just some and watching him kind of going through some of his drills today. He looked a little bit stiff. He looks a little bit sore. He's got to find some more confidence. It, it, I think that would be the biggest thing for me to say. He doesn't look like he's extremely, he doesn't look like he has that high level of confidence that we've seen from the other secondary players. He's got to continue to develop and work on that because we're going to need him too. We need to be five to six deep at the cornerback position. I also think that Boo Carter is a guy that is working at star, but could potentially play cornerback as well for us if we need him to. So I still think that we're deep, but you just want to see everyone coming along, everyone playing with that high level of confidence so that we can make that championship run because that's what, it, you know, it's going to take a whole lot of depth to get to that point. Now on to the offensive side of the football. We could start off with Nico Iamalayava and the quarterbacks. Didn't see a whole lot from them in the clips today, but I will say this just from the couple of passes that I saw from Nico. He looked, I mean, he looks really good. His balls are just like right on the money. And, um, you know, I just, I cannot wait to see him in that orange and white game. Sounds like he had a couple of good passes today. Uh, you know, several were for touchdowns. So that's huge. I think that one of the touchdowns was to Dante Thornton and one of them was to maybe Ethan Davis or like a tight end piece, something like that. So that's always really good to hear. You know, I think the gas some more is going to continue just chugging away and doing what he does. I love what I'm seeing from Dylan Sampson. Okay. He's been very vocal as a leader over the past few practices. And that's always going to be big. It just sounds like, again, he's another one of those players that is kind of taking the team into his own hands. And he may even be the most vocal leader on that offense maybe outside of Nico. I don't know how, you know, how much more vocal Nico has been, but that's big. And we're definitely expecting a really big season from him. Didn't get to see too many of the, uh, you know, other guys at running back. We did see Deshaun Bishop in a catch out there to the flats and he looked really good. I mean, he's a very good athlete. I just think that from top to bottom, that running back room, so many players that not only are going to be good at running that football, but they can catch the football out of the back foot. I would love to see Khalifa Keith doing that. Does he have those good hands? It looked like he did in his high school film, but that's it's going to be huge because with an offense that spreads you out, that can do so many different things, right? I mean, you've got to worry about all these big, strong, fast wide receivers and these big, strong, fast tight ends. You also have to, you know, worry about that run game, but then for the running backs to be able to come out of the backfield and do some different things, whether they're literally coming out of the backfield to catch routes or if we go to an empty set and then they turn into wide receivers, especially with a guy like Cam Seldon, I mean, it, it just the possibilities are so endless for this team. So those are some of my takeaways uh, just in that perspective. And uh, I didn't hear a whole lot about the wide receivers outside of what I just told y'all that it does sound like they look crisp. OK, they look clean. They had a couple of touchdown passes today. Still very curious who's going to win that battle between Dante Thornton and Chris Brazel. I mean, it's two big, strong, fast, physical guys that can do it all. Obviously, once Brew comes back, that entire room looks a lot different. We can talk about guys like Squirrel White, who I think I heard a couple of things about him. Uh, just make I think he made a touchdown catch today as well. But I mean, we already know he's an absolute and total dog. Braylon Staley is a dog. Uh, and I saw over the weekend in the scrimmage that Mike Matthews, he had a long touchdown catch. I think that that was on Jordan Matthews. So, I mean, that that room is just deep. Now on to the tight ends. Really like what I saw from Ethan Davis. Again, he continues to show that he can be that physical presence. Uh, from a blocking perspective, and holding stays just looks phenomenal blocking. He actually looks like he's bigger than Ethan Davis. So 
Right now, I would say that maybe holding stays is going to be the favorite to be that starter, but we rotate our tight ends so much. So they'll both get plenty of playing time. And we're continuing to hear a lot of great things about Miles Kisselman, who also had a touchdown pass. I believe that that one was from Gaston Moore. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're just getting deeper and deeper every single time that we come together and talk about a practice. It just seems like we're getting better and better. Offensive line looks really good. Now, the only clip that I got to see from the offensive line so far was with the left side of our line. Okay, so we had Shamrod Umarov playing at uh, left guard, and we had, obviously, Cooper Mays was at center. And then we had Lance Hurd at left tackle. And, man, they looked really good. You know, I love the speed that Sham has playing at guard. And your guards, I mean, you want for them to be fast. They have to be able to move well and move quickly. And now we did see Sham kind of fall down, but outside of that, he looked really good. He looked really crisp. It also kind of seems like him and Lance Hurd are kind of starting to build a bond because we saw Lance kind of chuckling about that. And, um, you know, I, I just think that that's so important for the entire offensive line to gel well. Now we're talking about that whole left side, okay, potentially could be two new starters for this team. Really two guys that haven't played that much at all for this team. So if they can all come together as a good group, as a good unit of five, then yeah, we've got something very special, y'all, because outside of that left guard position, there's no real question marks on the offensive line. So, you know, we'll see who will win that battle. I still really like Aiden Bustle. I think that he looks good. We didn't get to see him today, but he physically looks like a SEC guard, okay? He just has that size. He has that look, and he moves very well, too. Jackson Lampley, you can never forget about him. Uh, and then Dane Davis, who's that swing guy. He can be the backup everywhere. Still want to see more out of Vice and Lane. Can he continue to improve as the backup center? That's going to be critical. How much can William Satterwhite help us out this season? You know, are we going to be leaning on him? We'll see. I don't know how much we'll know about that. Maybe until we get closer to the season, that's going to come once those pads are on every single day and the bullets are constantly flying and, you know, we're practicing two, three times a day. That's when we'll really start to tell who's who and what's what. We didn't get to see anything at all from the defensive line, but we already know what we got there. I mean, it's just a whole lot of studs. It's a very deep room. Um, and I am expecting for us to have a more, uh, you know, a more clear idea of what that starting rotation will look like around the spring game. I don't think it's gonna change too much by the time that we get to the season, just because there's so many veterans in that room, but we're still missing guys like Jordan Ross. Um, and, you know, I, obviously he's going to, once he gets on campus, he's gonna be a guy that's gonna push for some playing time. How much can he do it versus all these other veterans and all these other studs? That is yet to be determined, but very, very excited about that group. Now we have not talked about linebackers yet, like what I've been seeing from them so far, uh, even though it wasn't a whole lot to be seen in practice clips today, but I mean, we just look really, really good. You know, it sounds like Coach Inge uh, had some praise to give out to Keenan Pilly and to Jeremiah T. Lander. Right now, they could end up being our two starters. How does Arion Carter look once he comes back? How does he fit into that whole mix? You know, we've talked about Jalen Smith. He looks really good. I think that Edwin Spillman is a guy that has a great opportunity to get some, you know, really solid playing time this season. We haven't talked about Jordan Burns because he's not on campus yet, but he's another one. I think that he could come in and be very similar to an Edwin Spillman, just as far as being able to fight for some early playing time. Um, and then, you know, you've got guys like Caleb Perry, who has looked good in all the other clips that I've seen outside of what we've been showing on this channel. He's looked good, uh, you know, in some of the scrimmage clips that I've seen. Just looks like he's strong at the point of contact. And, you know, I just think that that room is really, really deep. Obviously, Elijah Herring is out as well. Can he come in? Does he get better once he comes back? I mean, that's another just really, really deep room. So from top to bottom, you know, I think that it was a really good day for everyone off of what I could see and off of what I've been hearing. Sounds like the coaching staff is just very impressed. There's a whole lot of great competition going on. And this is a team, man, like we say at the end of every single one of these deals, this is a team that has a really good shot to win the whole doggone thing. But we will we'll see how we will continue to progress throughout all of the offseason and i think that we're back practicing on wednesday and i believe on thursday we've got another scrimmage it sounds like that's going to be a night scrimmage so how do the players perform when the lights are literally on them those are the things that actually matter but that's it for this video thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end love y'all and please make sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell share with your friends family and other volunteer fans and we'll see y'all in the next one thanks peace